Welcome back. Today we are going to demystify a notion that goes like saving is for the wealthy. So today I'm I'm privileged to have our head of operations, Bwana Daniel Wanyoike. Karibu sana Bwana Daniel. And this interview is in courtesy of Buraha Zenoni. So Bwana Daniel, I have seen so many youths in the age of 25 and 30 whom you have inspired and are actually doing well when it comes to in terms of wealth and property. So what is your trick actually? Uh, thank you, Sheila and Hussein, uh, for giving me this opportunity so that we can demystify that notion that savings is only for the wealthier and the rich. I would really like first to explain to our young team uh, about savings. What we believe about savings, it's uh, an income that is not used or not consumed. From what you earn, you can set aside something for for a rainy day. We normally say that uh, savings it, it acts as a buffer in times of emergency. These emergencies could be uh, but uh, not limited to uh, a sickness for example that needs an immediate uh, financial attention uh, we can also have, uh, God forbid, an accident. Uh, we can also have a situation like a job loss. You have lost your daily uh, income. We all we all say that uh, if, as as the youth, the question we need to ask ourselves is, are we going to be energetic forever? The answer is no. The time that you reach, that I will not have that energy to be able to work from Monday to Friday. Sometimes I will not have that energy to work from morning to evening. But when I was in my youth, I was able to take care of my future by saving the little that I had. There's always that misconception that you save because you have much. That's not the, the true position. Saving is not about how much you have, but it's not about, it's about the sacrifice that you make with what you have. Look at scenario whereby we have the current generation which is more of a, a spending culture than a saving culture. What we mean by saving culture is you have that sacrifice to forego some wants for a future goal. You are able to sacrifice something today because you want to take care of our future. As you are aware, our future is uncertain. Our future is unknown. But we can try to make it certain with what we have for now. And by doing that, by saving the little we have, we can at least be able to project and say, by the time I'll be 50 years, I'll have been able to accumulate this amount of money. And by doing that, I'll also be able to achieve my goal that I have set. So there's, there's simple tips for a savings culture is first you save before you spend in our current generation or in the current economy that we have we normally say that we save after we spend and realistically if you look at what we normally earn it's not even enough to take care of our needs because needs keep on changing my need today could be i want to buy a car but two, two years down the line 
I want to upgrade that car. So needs are headless. But you can make a sacrifice and say, I need to be saving this amount of money at each and every month because I have a goal that I want to achieve in future. And that will say, we must always set specific financial goals. A dream house that you want to, uh, to acquire in 10 years to, to come, you can start acquiring it today by saving the little that you are getting. A dream vacation that you have been dreaming of, you can make it happen if you start saving the little that you have today. So set specific financial goals. The other tips is on start small. Start small means how much are you willing to sacrifice this month to be able to achieve your future goal. You don't start by saving a lot. This month say, I want to sacrifice hard shillings. You'll be able to assess the impact of your sacrifice. Next month, you ask yourself, what if I push myself and save 200? What is the impact of that? Savings. Next, the next week, you say, let me increase my, my savings and this on my spendings. What is the impact? You find yourself, you started slowly, but in the end, you find that you have been able to sacrifice a lot than what you thought. But it's because you are able to start small. You didn't have that notion, that, that, that element you call uh, a kacha shop. That you used to do a budget of 10,000, then you want to do this month 2,000. It's not possible. But you can do it gradually. You start saving small, but you graduate with, with time. The, the other tips that you can do is to make savings fun and engaging. To, be, to make it fun and engaging, it can either be by your own self. You say, I want to do a 52 weeks savings challenge. One week, 100, second week, 200, three weeks, 300, 400, the fourth week, 400. You go on building on that culture. And the, at the end of the period, you'll find yourself achieving your objective. The other tips is on automating your saving. If I have money in my pocket and I walk into the nearest shopping center, I'll be tempted to buy so many things that I am interested or I find along the way. I find an interesting suit, I say this one, I, I, I must buy. I, go, I find my friend with a, a nice shoe, I say, I also must have this one. Simply because I have the money in my pocket. But in, in automation is whereby I authorize my bank to be deducting a certain amount of money at each and every end of the month and put to my savings account. This one will help me in avoiding impasse buying, but on the other hand, I'm also, be, I'm also able to, to gain on my savings. And savings has a lot of benefits. One of the benefits of savings is, as we said, it will be able to assist you to take care of your emergencies. An emergency is a, an abrupt need of financial within a short time. For example, an accident, God forbid, that requires you to have that money there and there. If you had not saved, you won't be able to take care of that emergency. But if you had saved, you go back to your savings and say, let me get this money because he said it is safe for any day. And eventuality has happened. Am I about to take care of this emergency? Yes, because I had saved. Saving also gives you that financial freedom. That I don't care what happens, I'm, taken, I'm, I'm, I'm covered. You have kids who are growing up. 
they have you are you have you have set them targets they have dreams to attend to good schools and it is now you to actualize their dreams by start saving today you save today by the time they be attaining that age of joining high school you have saved enough money and you have that freedom that i don't care whichever school they are going to be admitted i have saved enough I understand the other data was was floating shares in the market. So what actually is the benefit of investing in SACO shares as compared to any other investment? The benefit of investing with the Tawasako shares is mostly on the returns. With Tawasako, we have, we have a guaranteed return of 20% on your investment. That is, for example, if you invest uh, 1 million with us, you are guaranteed of 200,000 a third of the year, less now the withholding tax. And if you compare with the other investments, for example, uh, you being an investor, given a scenario whereby you are given an option to either buy shares in, uh, in Tawasako or invest in, for example, in a rental units. We take an example. I have two million to invest, 20 million to invest, sorry. Uh, looking at the current economy and the current uh, market, with 20 million, if I want to do some rental units, for them to be classic and to attract a, a high class kind of tenants, I can only do at least 10 units. 10 units with 20 million. How much can I fetch with this each single unit per month? Each unit, uh, using the average rates, I can fetch around uh, 20,000 per unit. They are 10 in number, so per month is 200 thousand. Multiply by 12 months. How much is that? 2.4 million. Compare with the same investment with Tawasako. You bought Tawasako shares worth 20 million. At the end of the year, you are paid 20% of your 20 million. How much is that? that? That's 4 million. Compare now these 4 million that you have, uh, you, you, you have generated from investing with Tawasako and these 2.4 million that you have generated from investing in rental units. And again, you look at the, the cost of doing that business. Doing rental units requires you to have a, a, an estate manager, a lot of uh, repairs and maintenance, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, challenges with tenants, because again, you cannot be assured of hardy percent occupancy. But here when you invest with Tawasako, you buy their shares, it's a guarantee that you'll be getting your 20% returns after each and every end of the year. Bona Daniel, yes. so does, do the circles offer a saving platform? Yes, that's a good question. As, as Tawasako, we have a variety of products that are suitable for all our members be it an employed a member, a business uh, person, a junior member, or even Juakari members. We have uh, those products that are designed and suitable for each and every member in our circle. So give us your final word towards uh, us who are still struggling with the saving culture and trying to create wealth. The final one, that, the advice that I would give you is that savings is not about what you have, but savings is about the sacrifice that you make with what you have. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to echo back what Buana Daniel Wanyoke has advised us today. Savings is not about what you have, but the sacrifice you make with what you have. So, thank you so much for joining our channel today, 
and are advised to join our circle and start your saving culture today or as soon as possible.